This is from Shelley. Uh, if if I, well, I assume Shelley, was invited over to each of yours for dinner, what would you cook? <laughs> is that Shelley from the message board? I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it'd be veggie at mine, I'm afraid, so, you know, if you're expecting steaks. You know what, I, I bought a barbecue recently, and you can do quite good veggie barbecue stuff, like vegetables on a kebab stick and stuff, that's fine. Really yeah. <laughs> I, I think it would be the opposite around mine, unfortunately. Yeah, you'd make up for it. I'm very into um, preparing fresh squid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. You said that last time we interviewed you. You must be really yeah. into it. No, I'm very into it. I do it whenever I can because I quite like sort of. Um, it involves, you know, you, you start with this. Um, sorry, I've got some more. Um, weird, like, kind of prehistoric looking beast, and then you end up with these lovely little bits of fishy uh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> going around to yours, especially for lunch, is very, very much a kind of just get everything out of the fridge kind of affair, isn't it? Yeah. What's, what's also known as a day's work. Whenever Tom's coming over to do some singing or whatever at my house, <laughs> he'll always say, oh, maybe I'll turn up, maybe if I got there about 12.30. <laughs> 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 so, by the time we actually sit down and do any work, it's about three o'clock. Since we're on the subject of food, um, Brandy wrote in to say uh, to hey, us. Hey, there we go. Is that, yeah. is that the link? Was that seamless or what? Yeah, slick. Yeah. slick. I know. What is your favourite place to eat in America? There's a lot of great places to eat in America. Mm -hmm. The first thing that popped from my head was that place we went to in um, DC at about five in the morning, whatever it was. Oh, the Georgetown was Cafe. Oh, yeah. 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 But, you know, I, I wouldn't necessarily rank it as one of the world's best corn and such, but it was the final cherry on the top of a great night out. Tom, did you ever have any nasty accidents as a child? Um, yeah, you fell on your head once, didn't you? <laughs> really hard impact. Yeah, and woke up and suddenly I wanted to be friends with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I remember falling off my bike. Um, and I've ridden my bike down this hill and I wasn't supposed to ride it down this hill and I hit a molehill at the bottom of it and went flying oh, and hurt my leg but because my mum had said you're not to ride your bike down that hill I didn't want to admit that I'd done it and I was hobbling around for a few days probably with a dead leg actually like a proper dead leg um, but I was too scared to tell anyone and I couldn't kick a football or do anything and I was a bit, I was a bit kind of worried that I'd actually <laughs> really badly injured myself but it eventually went it put, it put an end to my football career. Actually, that's which was very promising at the time. <laughs> that's the only reason you're not a professional footballer, mate. It, well, yeah, yeah. Would you rather be a worried genius or a joyful simpleton? <laughs> you know, I think Tim is a bit of a worried genius, and I would regard myself as a joyful simpleton, so... Um, I'd describe you know. myself as a worried simpleton. <laughs> <laughs> Cricket is an unknown sport in Mexico. Could you explain it to us, and maybe give us a quick demo? It's full of great nuances. I think that's the thing about it. You've really got to invest quite a lot of time and energy to understand the game and learn the game um, before you can really appreciate it. It's going to be very hard for someone from Mexico, I guess, to, to be able to do that. Um, you know, so unless they move to a cricket playing nation for a bit and <laughs> learn how it works, I don't know. If you could relive one day again out of a bit keen memory bank, which one would you choose and why? Ooh. I loved the, the, the second O2 gig, uh, whenever it was, back in February. Because um, it was a bit of a trunk, because obviously I'd lost my voice the night before and had to have all sorts of injections and stuff. I was very worried that it was all going to go wrong. Uh, and, it, and it felt like such a big success. We played really well and I felt we connected really well with, with, with the crowd that night and there was just a just great sense of joyous celebration in the air. When Hopes and Fears first came out it was very hard to sort of, because uh, we had no reference point, it was very hard to get a grip on sort of what, how amazing things were. We were playing at the forum, was it the day, it was the day the album came out, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. And um, you know that's a really fun show. I think that's probably the biggest show we'd ever done actually at the time. And um, 
you know, we were doing rushing around town, doing lots of promo, and everyone was very excited. And in the evening, we had, I remember John Turner, who sort of does everything at Ireland records for us, saying, oh, it's already gone platinum, by the way, after one day. <laughs> um, and, uh, and we were like, oh, that's, that sounds really good. <laughs> <laughs> Where, you know, we just didn't know what to expect anyway, and it was just, I, I think to be able to go back and, and, and realise just how incredible that time was, would be quite nice. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the whole thing to celebrate the first anniversary of the Only ANC podcast. Yes,